welcome to the Wee Red Barn, uh, just outside Maston in New Zealand. Um, we grow strawberries and raspberries, blackberries, we do a bit of wine, potatoes, olives, uh, we do a number of things. We have a lot of animals around for people to, uh, to have a look at and actually interact with and hold on to and you know, just so you can be really close to the farm. So I think. We, uh, we started growing raspberries here um, five years ago. Um, we used to grow strawberries and raspberries in Scotland, uh, in St Andrews, and it was for the supermarket. Really big operation, but uh, there was also a farm shop attached to that, and um, that's probably, you know, that's where we learned a lot of the things we did. Um, so we thought coming here would be a bit of a quieter life, but I have to say that uh, that was probably just a bit of a dream right now, because uh, it's actually busier than, than what we were then. At least then we had people who would go and do jobs and things like that. A lot of the stuff here, because we're so small, we've really got to do a lot of it ourselves. But to be honest with you, everybody has to work in life, so uh, that one. Anyway, it was um, always another way to learn how to make life easier. And the first crop that we grew was strawberries and as you can see we grew them on the ground and I have to say that was uh, some pretty hard days bending down there picking up every day. So now we've uh, taken the labour side, cut the labour out of that a bit by going to the tables and we grow in coir bags, drip, drip pipes and the irrigation is set up in one of the sheds, it's all automatic. So on a day like this we could probably be watering anything from uh, usually about three, four times um, a day up to ten times a day. We're, uh, I've seen two weeks ago when it was really hot we, we did spend a lot of time uh, it was going off and on and off and on just as the bags were drying out it would click back on and that was it, so they get everything they need. I mean, this is um, this is now uh, nearly the end of March, and um, we'll have another flush to come out of here. As you can see, there's a, quite a lot of uh, uh, green fruit, still a bit of flower. Um, as you can see, it's uh, still as good. Um, and in New Zealand, this has been getting into autumn. The next move will be into raspberries. Uh, the autumn raspberries, which we'll go to next, but as you can see, people don't mind coming picking this, um, which makes a big difference. So we'll go around and uh, have a look at things like the raspberries. Uh, uh, this was a test block that we did, a trial block, I should say, not a trial block that we did um, two years ago, and we've uh, fully worked out the best. The varieties for it, uh, when to when to do what. It was all all a bit of a learning, but um, we did this in Scotland as well. But um, you know, it doesn't matter where about in the world. You've got to work to your to your own climates and things like that. So uh, we're, uh, some varieties that we had over there didn't do as well as what the varieties here do, um, and so on and so on. But I don't think uh, I ain't too disappointed in these. Uh, there's some. We've had a lot of fruit out here, we started picking in November and as I say it's March, we'll get another another go at these yet, another two goes probably uh, then it will start to get too cold and so on and so on So These ones that you were looking at there are first year plants and the next ones here are two year old plants now they are basically finished and I want to use these bags for four years I know they don't look finished but they're a lot of small rubbishy fruit so um, but they're, they're finished. Um, so we plant again in May. So I thought that, uh, you know, because we're a shop and people like to come in and have a look around and see what we're doing, I thought we'd do things just to see them and, you know, uh, we put some lettuces in. I prom presume the economics of it wouldn't add up doing a whole field of lettuce like that. I mean, it would be too expensive. But, you know, we can do things like that. It's very good for, um, people to see what else you can do, disabled people maybe, it's a good um, thing, you can come along and you can actually do something and work away and um, you know it lends itself to 
lots of opportunities maybe somebody who hasn't got much land you can put stuff up and grow them up like this it's not too difficult uh, as you can see so we tried a few different things everything looks like it's growing they've been in there for two weeks now and they've all taken so we'll have a look at them again in a few months time then we've got the raspberries the raspberries is one of our uh, one of main, main crops as well along with the strawberries we um, in New Zealand here I mean everybody tells you that uh, come to New Zealand and uh, see the sunshine and all that but uh, it doesn't it doesn't always work like that um, we've uh, experienced quite a lot of rain over here this year and raspberries and rain just don't go together so um, we uh, the last few years we've been trialing and working away with these covers now these covers are they've got a netting and a wire that runs along the center one hangs over one side and one over the other and then they're clipped together like so, like that, and the two sheets then they're uh, clipped there, they hold each other and then locked into place. Uh, they've got the plastic cover, so the rain then runs down into here. If we get a lot of wind, which uh, in the wire up here in New Zealand is uh, pretty common, I have to say, you'll see it all opens up. Also on really hot days where it's um, the sun's breaking down on the plant, you build up a lot of heat. The heat just escapes through the uh, through the cover, so it won't it won't prolong the length of the season. But it does prolong the length of the season because at night as well they stay closed uh, and keeps the heat in here. So it is warmer in here. So you know you can extend your season a bit and. Um, you can uh, certainly keep the rain off it, or the bulk of the rain. I'm not saying you keep all the rain off it, but um, sometimes on a wet, windy, really wet, windy day, you get a bit of spray. But I can actually live with that spray of rain coming through. I mean, I, it's not ideal, but look, when you're uh, when there's only the two of us, um, it's very difficult to um, to manage. Um, things like uh, the the high tunnels and things like that because we're, you, you've got to be out there op open them up close them open up close them which is uh, on a you know a big commercial setup is the way to go there is no doubt about it but um, uh, for us where we're just the two of us we can't really afford to do that uh, we're you know this is a bit of a compromise to be honest with you but it, it does the job and as you can see on a day like this it's doing the job so this is our autumn raspberries that we have here they, they come on the tip as you can see um, the last wee bit we get them these, these are a late variety uh, Lewis I think these ones are uh, so these are they're quite a late one um, some are a bit further behind than others you can see some in the distance over there they're um, they're almost at picking stage actually, there, in fact there is some red ones there um, where some of these seem to be a bit further behind but yeah, you mean like, you look down here and there's, uh, there's some raspberries I mean that's a reasonable size of raspberry too I mean, the, um, and, it, and it feels far and it's good we've got irrigation in here as well um, so we, and that, again that's on the timer so we're not wasting a lot of water, the water's all concentrated at the bottom of the plants, uh, our fertiliser goes in there, um, everything goes in. We work in a V system, work in a V system here, there's two two rows basically on the top, so in the in the springtime, these here, the, the new growth will come up the inside, and the this wood here will give us all our summer crop, We'll cut that out, and the new ones that come up next year will give us our autumn crop again. So, hence the reason of the the two wires. Um, a bit more labour intensive than just putting um, putting in uh, raspberries in an open field. But the economics of this, you know, you, you've got to you've got to pay for all of this infrastructure, and basically, uh, that's the way we do it. So. Bees uh, are another thing we, um, I was hoping today, in fact, oh here you go, everybody talks to me about uh, bees not coming in, or actually one's just come in there for you to see, 
Uh, he does the pollination. But they're uh, him and all his friends. I see quite a few going about now. We talk about it. Uh, so we have no issue with me either here. Um, it was. Ah, look, there's some bees pollinating here. You can see. Uh, buzzing about quite happily. And even then, on the colder days, the bees coming in here. Wet days, they come in here. So. In general, we have no issue with pollination. We have a lot of people who do talk about uh, pollination and issues under covers, but we don't seem to be uh, too much of an issue here. On this system here, we have some netting around the outside, and when we've got these big crops in the summer, and we have a big population of birds around here, we drop these these nets down and basically we have an enclosed bird cage as well so it's uh, not just a case of um, keeping the rain off and keeping the birds out as well which do become a bit of an issue so uh, that's, uh, that's another part of the, the ongoing mission there's always somebody after the fruit as I say well, the farm's kind of pretty well open so pretty well we can have a look around a few pets, there's a wee shooty here, Lamborghini, here she is. Hey Lammy. Um, we have a few pigs going about. Now, I think it is. In fact, there's one that's had some young ones down the bottom down there. Bigger one than me. We have a lot of uh, school groups that come round. And they, um, they can come in and see touch feel. It's, uh, it makes it, it's not just a case of um, trying to extract money out of people every day. Uh, I mean, obviously, we've got to make a living, but um, you know, we're, uh, we get a lot of people that come in and, and just learn about things, see things. Uh, as you can see, a lot this happened yesterday. With uh, some piglets, some piglets, some piglets, some piglets. Uh, looks like they're resting away. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Not a bad life, really, on the, uh, the wee red barn. Uh, yeah. As you can see, they're. Uh, uh, some of the, it's the one on the outside here that's uh, the mother, uh, the wee black one, no, she's a bit too young yet, so uh, that's it, but you can see them not too of colour. Yeah. Again, for uh, you know, for people coming in, you know, we can, um, people who want to uh, actually handle, you see, so that, you know, people can see and hold. That uh, makes all the difference. Right. We grow a lot of uh, raspberries, strawberries, gooseberries. We have black currants, red currants. Uh, these are all finished away back in January. So. It does look a bit neglected at the moment, I can see that, but uh, we'll give this a tidy up, take out the biggest of the weeds, give it all a clean up. Uh, it's in a bird cage, because again we have issues with that, with the, uh, with the birds that do take them, so um, we, uh, we need to again look after that sort of stuff. So we'll get in there, clean it all up, it's uh, just part of the end. Then we'll give them a good prune, open the hearts right up and try and reduce the amount of disease that gets through them. So, uh, a bit more air around your plants makes all the difference. So, uh, yeah, you can see there's one block of raspberries here, the shop's there, another block of raspberries, we have another block of stro uh, raspberries around the back, all our strawberries are on some leased land at the back over there, so, uh, but this year uh, we've bought a lot more tables out there, there's a couple of hundred metres. We have about 6,000 metres we're putting in this year, so um, it's all it's all jobs we've got to do. Uh, we'll do that. Um, actually, arrives here about the 23rd of the month, I think it is, of April, and then we're um, 
we are going for um, the building that and planting by the end of May. So we'll do that and then yeah, that should help a lot. We're, um, we've planted some more, some more gooseberries here. Uh, that wasn't quite enough this year. We, we seem to be uh, in every year we've obviously building the business a wee bit more. So we've got a few more. I've got to up the corners and things like that. As you can see, we have a lot of potatoes here. Uh, old potatoes, and we, you know, they get cut when we're lifting them. Just, you know, just rubbish, brock, basically we call it. It's good for the pigs. The pigs love that. So um, we uh, we use that. Uh, here because all the spare land that we have left, and you can see in here we have it all fenced off, so all the way down to the bottom and then all, all the way up, and we have loading ramps, so it's all it's all quite easy to handle. So we're um, you know we can get rid of all the waste from the shop, all secondhand strawberries, and, you know, all the rubbish like uh, we'll go for our. Uh, uh, wonder. More raspberries. The, uh, you can see. Oh, I said to you earlier on that uh, normally what you do is you get your raspberry cane and you grow on the tip. You get your fruit on the tip of it, such as here, like that. You can see there's lots of raspberries here, but there's a lot up the other end. But basically what we do, just before, just after Christmas, you will see, we went through and cut, cut the raspberry here. And you end up with three tips. So you end up with a bit more fruit. You don't end up with three times more, but you end up with a bit more, as you can see. It's uh, all just actually starting. Um, I think we actually, we had a pick out here just yesterday, so... Yeah, I'm not going to go wind them through. It all looks a bit hairy at the moment, but that's always the same with these autumn ones like that. But that, once we've finished, once we've finished um, picking this crop, you can see it's all starting to turn now. It's all it's on the way. There's lots of raspberries. You can see it all there. Look at that. It's just full of it. Basically, we'll cut all the straggly stuff off back to maybe six inches above the wire. And then it'll be all easier managed again. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a block over here. We've got to uh, and these structures, I mean, we've um, we've done all this ourselves, really. They're, they're not they're not that difficult to do. Just knock a post into the ground, run some wire round and over the top. It has to be. Uh, wire, high tensile wire, uh, no not high tensile wire, the uh, 6 mil cable, 6 mil cable, we have some tensioners on the bottom, so none of it's too difficult, uh, that's a good thing about doing these sort of things. We try to use up all the land, as you can see, we've got the olives, I uh, know, yeah, yeah, and underneath the olives, we've got we family of piglets here. And I see under the washing line in the background, even more ducks like. There does seem like a lot of ducks about at the moment, I have to say, but um, uh, we'll, at some point soon they'll, uh, we'll sell them on. Um, to people who want a few ducks, obviously. Uh, yeah. uh, the last crop, normally the last crop that we will pick is the olives. The olives are normally harvested in June. Yeah, June, normally. And you can see, here's the olives. Sometimes, once your eye gets in, geez, you can see them. But there's, there is, a, there's some trees on the corner here where the wind hits it a lot. You don't get so many, but once you go right round, we have about 200 of these trees, so uh, we can harvest these. Uh, we harvest them when the uh, second week in June normally, and that's normally when they're at the fullest point. At the